The Queen Mary launched in September 1934. She was a little over a thousand feet long and had accommodations for 2,020 passengers. Her faithful crew of 1,200 sailed around the world for over a thousand voyages until she retired in December of 1967. Soon after, a whole new career began for her when the city of Long Beach, California turned her into a world-class hotel and floating tourist attraction. But in 1972, her world took a turn when she became a movie star, serving as the double for the SS Poseidon in the Irwin Allen production and blockbuster hit, The Poseidon Adventure. Here is her story. Paul Gallico, author of The Poseidon Adventure, was a renowned novelist and sports writer. Back in 1937, Gallico crossed the Atlantic to the United States on the majestic RMS Queen Mary. Two days out from Southampton, the superliner encountered extremely heavy seas that caused her to roll. Gallico was lunching with a few passengers in the first class dining room, which is a midship and three decks high. A trio of large waves suddenly hit the ship. The force was such and so sudden that the old girl was knocked on her side and stayed there only a few seconds, but seemed like years to the frightened passengers. Everything went flying, cutlery, crockery, and waiter's trays with crystal glasses. Passengers fell from their chairs in one cascading crash, followed by timeless seconds of dead silence. At last, and as designed, the ship righted herself and resumed her normal course in the rough Atlantic. But what if the Queen Mary had rolled completely over and stayed upside down that day? 30 years later, when Gallico was looking for the subject of a novel, this incident came floating up to his consciousness and the idea for the Poseidon adventure was born. The Queen Mary is considered by many to be the greatest and most revered ocean liner ever to sail. She served as the setting and technical advisor for key sequences in the film, directed by Ronald Neame. The celebrated movie maker used historical photographs and plans to recreate large sections of the ship. The sets were accurately built and used for filming scenes many of which would be turned completely upside down by the rogue tidal wave. Production designer William Krieber researched down to the last detail the exquisite dining room aboard the Queen Mary and built an amazing set. The sun deck was used as a practical set for Mr. Martin's early morning jog. It also served as location for Mr. and Mrs. Rosen's discussion about where their cruise was taking them. These roles were expertly portrayed by Academy Award recipients Red Buttons, Jack Albertson, and Shelley Winters. Hey, it says here there's a package tour to the mountain where Moses received the Ten Commandments. No. When we finally get to Israel, we're gonna stay put, no traveling. Academy Award winner Gene Hackman depicts the outspoken Reverend Scott, who delivers an eye-opening sermon on the sports deck. Pray to that part of God within you. Have the guts to fight for yourself. Inside, we find another Academy Award recipient, Ernest Borgnine with Stella Stevens, playing the bickering couple of Lieutenant Mike and Linda Rogo. Their stateroom was built as a set and based on the Queen Mary's luxurious rooms. Come here, you lousy cop. And who can forget Eric Shea? playing the part of Robin Shelby as he clung to the rails on deck, climbing up the stairs during the pelting rainstorm at the opening of the film. Then there was the exhilarating scene on the bridge where the captain, played by Leslie Nielsen, is hit by the tidal wave on the SS Poseidon. The sequence required so much water and special effects that it had to be completely rebuilt on the Fox lot, but it is nearly a carbon copy of the real bridge on the Queen Mary. Throughout the ship's public spaces and hallways, you can see the wonderful 1930s deco interiors and architecture. Her paneling is lined with exotic woods and fitted with wonderful works of art, making the Queen Mary a truly historic vessel. As with any luxury liner, first-class amenities are part of the Queen Mary's allure. She maintained a pool, spa, weight room, nursery, and full-service salon. Carol Lindley, who played Nani, and Red Buttons as Mr. Martin, accidentally stumble into the upside-down barber shop, even though in a race to survive, they manage a joke about a new way of cutting hair. Strap the customer in, push a button, raise him up, flip him over, 
let his hair hang down and snip, snip, snip. Queen Mary's engine room was the actual location in the film where the chief engineer worked on repairing the damaged ballast pump. In reality, the massive equipment was used to operate two of the four steam turbine engines, which provided 160,000 horsepower. Her average cruising speed was 28 and a half knots, and she could cross the Atlantic in under five days. The intricate labyrinth of catwalks, pipes, and instruments were also used to recreate Reverend Scott's climactic final scene. It was also rebuilt upside down on the Fox lot with painstaking detail, but was based on the real working power plant of the Queen Mary. The RMS Queen Mary, as the SS Poseidon, was replicated in miniature, measuring 22 feet long, and now lives at the Maritime Museum in San Pedro, California. Poseidon Adventure made history as the highest grossing disaster film of its time. It accumulated seven Academy Award nominations and one win. But it will never be forgotten that its spectacular look and soul came from the RMS Queen Mary. <laughs>